Paul Phillips. I'm director of orchestras and chamber music at Brown University. Our trip to Ireland was a wonderful experience for all the Brown students who participated. Almost 100 students uh, went on that trip. We had last gone abroad in 2007. That was a trip to China. And after that, we thought we'd go again on tour soon. But the financial meltdown of 2008 and the various geopolitical problems around the globe uh, in the following years made it all but impossible to go on another trip. Finally, everything came together for this wonderful trip to Ireland that we took in 2013. It's so important for students to have the opportunity to experience other countries and other cultures and to take our music abroad. Uh, we had some wonderful audiences in Ireland who seemed to really appreciate the music and the programs that we brought there. When we planned our tour with Music Celebrations International, we decided we wanted to celebrate American music, and so we titled our program An American Celebration of Music in Ireland. We brought over music by some of the best-known American composers, Leonard Bernstein's Symphonic Dances from West Side Story, George Gershwin's An American in Paris, and Samuel Barber's Adagio for Strings were on the program. Then we played some pieces by lesser-known American composers, but wonderful pieces. Global Warming by Michael Abels was a natural selection for this concert because it incorporated Irish folk tunes along with different kinds of music from throughout the world. Middle Eastern music, Indian music, it used uh, different kinds of percussion from throughout the world as well as the Irish drum, the Bauron. So that was a popular piece with our audiences. Uh, we also played a movement called Dublin, Celtic Air and Runaway Reel from the Gemini Concerto by William Perry. This is a piece that I have a particular tie to. I recorded it with the Irish National Orchestra just a couple of years before our tour. It's a kind of triptych that goes from one city to another around the world. Concert tour itself took place during Easter week. Originally we thought that might be a problem, but the tour uh, company convinced us that it would not be, and indeed it did not hinder our tour in any way. We had wonderful audiences, terrific sized audiences everywhere we played in Dublin, Limerick, and Wexford. Um, but in honor of Easter week, we did begin each concert with the Russian Easter Overture by Nikolai Rimsky Korsakov. One of the highlights of our tour was our collaboration with the Limerick Choral Union. This chorus of about 120 voices based in Limerick uh, was a joy to make music with and they also threw us a wonderful party after our, uh, after our performance at the University of Limerick, a party that I'm sure everyone in the orchestra will remember for many years to come. The Brown University Orchestra is made up of about 70% science and mathematics concentrators. People are always surprised to learn that since it sounds like a conservatory orchestra, even though 
Only about 10% of the orchestra at most are music concentrators. I'm Hannah Merman and I'm an economics major here at Brown. And I'm Rebecca Lichten and I'm a neuroscience concentrator. I'm Ellie Seiden. I am a junior majoring in comparative literature and music. My concentration is immunobiology. So bio, but a track in immunology. But that's what makes this such a wonderful organization. The students who join the orchestra join out of passion for music. They're not in the orchestra because it's a requirement or because, the, because they're trying to make a musical career for themselves, a professional musical career. They do it because they love music and they want to be a part of this exciting organization. And so when we go on tour, we have very many different perspectives. We have geologists and anthropologists and political science majors and linguists. And all of these students with their different points of view make the tour a very rich experience. Probably uh, more interesting in that regard than it might be if we were an orchestra of all professional musicians. Many of the tour participants had never been to Ireland before. In fact, many had never left the United States before. Uh, many students told me that it was the first time they had ever been to Europe and what an exciting and uh, eye-opening experience it was to cross the Atlantic Ocean and see what the world looked like from outside of the United States. This is a very important part of what we do here at Brown to open up students' vistas and give them an opportunity to see the world from a new perspective. And I'm very happy that the Brown Orchestra was able to play a part in that. I think what made this trip different for me is it's my first time in Europe I definitely have found like some of my closest friends through the Brown Orchestra, like people that I've just been playing music with for the past three years, especially the violist, and a lot of the violists take the same classes as me, and like we all just are very close friends, so it's been great. One of the great things about, about the trip was that we had a fair amount of free time. Just exploring with friends in, in Europe is, is a pretty fantastic thing. To choose a lunch place that's right next to an old Viking tower is something that's, that's pretty cool and, and maybe uniquely European, if not uniquely Irish. I think that one of the most amazing things about just driving around Ireland was seeing how beautiful the countryside was. Um, it was just picturesque, absolutely picturesque. And we had an amazing tour guide who was just so um, just descriptive and he knew so many little stories and anecdotes. But the English soldiers were told, go there, so they went. Simple for the Irish, you know, bang, 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 bang. They started shooting them in the morning. They were still shooting them towards the afternoon. The English eventually decided that this wasn't going to work. So they sent their troops down. As it turned out, Brown University entered into an agreement with Trinity College Dublin just a few months before our tour. This was uh, an agreement for the Plus One program, whereby Brown students can study at Trinity College for a year and get a master's degree when they return there after graduating from Brown in just one additional year. This is a program that Brown has started with just a few universities throughout the world and we are very happy to be part of the celebration of this new agreement and actually met with the administrators at Trinity College Dublin when we started our tour there. tour um, what were the fantastic halls that we got to play in so I guess I, I haven't had very much opportunity to play in real concert halls besides the, the vets in my freshman year um, so the halls we played in were just were just beautiful and um, it's such a pleasure to play in a place that is made specifically for for music and, and the acoustics are set up especially for you and for your sound and just like be a part of that history like see like the ruins from like churches or just old buildings um, and just being like walking in a place where like people walked there you know over a thousand years ago you know and that was really cool to like just be um, in such like a like 
ancient place, but at the same time it's still here now, so it's like we still appreciate its beauty and everything. <laughs> I mean, we were really thankful to have this opportunity to go abroad with this ensemble, considering that um, Brown is not a school that has a performance major or concentration. And the fact that, you know, we come from, you know, every member of the orchestra that comes from a different background, has different academic passions and interests, and we all kind of bond together playing in this group. Uh, just because of our mutual love for music and the fact that we were able to um, also take this appreciation for music overseas and to be heard in an entirely different country um, was just an amazing experience for us. Something that we recently learned actually, Paul told us that, well we knew that we were raising money for different charities in Ireland. like. So this tour group flew us out and part of what they do is that all of the proceeds for the concert, it, the money doesn't go to the orchestra, like that's, I mean, it's silly. And so they chose a few charities that all the proceeds would go to and we got the final count of how much we were able to raise and we actually were told, you know, the organizations that the money was going to and it was amazing. I think we made something like 10 or 12,000 pounds and it went to like, uh, I think there was like cystic fibrosis in Ireland and some other organization that was, you know, trying to help like homeless people in whatever city we were in. It was just so wonderful to know that we were not only bringing music to these people and like we got to explore the country, but we were also helping in other ways, which just is always nice, warm fuzzies. We spent several years raising the money needed for this tour because it was very important to me that no member of the orchestra not have this opportunity uh, for any reason and particularly for any reason uh, having to do with their financial circumstances. So uh, approximately 50% of the cost for every student was uh, covered through fundraising. But then there were many students who even then were not able to cover the remaining cost. And so we had uh, full financial aid to every student who required it. Some students came on the tour, did not pay anything at all. Uh, and I'm very pleased that they were able to come and have exactly the same experience as everyone else. Too good for words. Yes. We should go on tour again because it was amazing. It was always try to do it. I'm so thankful that I had the opportunity to go on this trip um, and connect connect with my fellow orchestra members. Um, I've been so thankful.